What's going on everybody? This is Chad. Welcome back to the Dorky and 40 channel. So the next couple videos here are going to be pretty interesting and I'm sure a lot of fun. So what I've been doing is I have been flying this build here on a Flight One hardware. I had a video that showed how I built it and everything like that. I've had no problems with Flight One. It's really flew fantastic. It's a different feeling than at beta flight for sure. Is it better? No, it's not. I don't think, but it definitely is different. It feels good. Um, I don't really know how else to explain it, but I'm really interested in trying out this whole bi-directional D shot RPM filter and if I'm going to do it, I want to use superior hardware and a, a new build. So I have some extra Flight One hardware here just because I'm a firm believer in it. And some people have said that Betaflight actually even runs better on the Revolt uh, hardware. And when you buy a lot of these flight controllers and ESCs that are from like all these people out there, you don't get warranties and stuff like that. Flight One has, you know, some nice exchange programs and all that kind of stuff. And just the hardware alone is fantastic. So we have the TBS Source One here, built up with the Revolt OSD, the Bolt 32. This is a 6S build. It's running the 6S uh, Sam Gooks, which, you know, are good 6S budget motors. They're not the smoothest that are out there, even though I haven't noticed any weird problems at all with them and when you're running a hero 7 like i am now whether you're in regular mode or hyper smooth mode you're really not going to notice bad stuff in your video and motors anymore anyway as long as you have stuff built correctly and they're not totally destroyed so the whole plan is to do an apples to apples comparison. So I've rewired it for Crossfire. I have applied all of the same settings for the RPM notch that, and I've applied all of the same pit loop settings, logging settings, and that kind of stuff to this quad right now. And I'm gonna run it stock without the RPM filter just to get some logs and kind of get like a before and after picture. So we'll, we'll gather some data and everything like that. And then we'll go ahead and set it all up to run with the RPM filter by downloading the snippets that they have to add to the Revolt OSD since it is a capable flight controller to run the D-Shot RPM filter bi-directional protocol and we'll upload the ESC uh, BL Heli 32 ESC hex files as well. And then we'll get all that configured and get everything running. But again, I wanted to get some data first and just see how things are going, see if I need to do any filter tweaks or whatever, tune it up with the PIDs and just go fly it. Maybe get that data out to Mark Spatz and see what he thinks. See if we can help out the community at all. So before we can actually get this running correctly with Crossfire and Betaflight, you do have to do a little bit of kind of changing around a little bit. So typically on a Flight 1 board, Crossfire wires up to the TX1 and TX3 pins, which sounds weird from people that are in the Betaflight world but it's just kind of how the board is designed. Inside the Flight One configurator, you can actually select that you want your Crossfire telemetry coming across TX3, which is your Smart Audio port, but I'm using Crossfire to run the Smart Audio anyway, so I didn't have to do that. So I already had TX3 wired up here, which would be channel two or your TX pin from the crossfire. So all I had to do So all I had to do was remove this TX1 pin right here and put that on to RX3. So once that is complete, everything worked just fine inside of Beta Flight and now Crossfire is all set up and ready to go. But the only other thing in Beta Flight that I 
found out that I had to do was I did have to adjust my configuration as far as flipping the board how I have it oriented in the quad and I also noticed that with the Revolt OSD target they have the motors remapped for you already to coincide with how the Bolt ESC and everything like that works. I did have to go into power and battery and enable the onboard ADC so that way I could get voltage. The current meter seems to not be working correctly, but I'm just gonna skip that and not use it anyway. Running on 6S, so not really pulling a whole lot of amps. And then of course, just the basic stuff as far as like going into the receiver, getting everything centered and working and all that kind of stuff. Setting up my modes, my OSD, and black box logging. Since I'm going to be running at 4K, 4K, I have the black box logging rate at 1 kilohertz, which I think 25% of the PID loop is pretty much what they want. And this will be the same when we switch over to the bi-directional anyway, because we'll need to be running a 4K, 4K loop then as well. I have just the stock tune on it right now with a little bit of changes to my rates and I did up the D-min uh, roll pitch and gain to settings that have kind of worked for the most part for me to eliminate prop wash. I have uh, changed set point to gyro, scaled my throttle a little bit and I haven't touched anything in filters except for changing my low pass one cutoff to 550. Uh, we'll go ahead and tune that in the field if I see it changes, but with this quad pretty much has been uh, My other source one has pretty much been around 525 to 550 anyway running the Johnny FPV props All the rest of the filtering for now will be stock and automatic and of course when we enable the bi-directional filter We're gonna have to go in and change some of this out so that's pretty much it for the setup and what the plan is. Now I guess the only thing to do is to go out and fly this and tune it up a little bit, see how things go, and we can import actually most of that tune and everything right over to the bi-directional setup when we have that. So we can get a lot of work out of the way and we should have no problem testing everything. I've seen a lot of people doing this and you know, Let's go do it. Let's go fly.